spooky for me so I'm going to give it a shot I'm going to sit down here and read as much of it as I can moved into my room because it got really hot downstairs with the candle burning. Unfortunately, I'm only on chapter 8, page 70, but I am exhausted and reading really, really slow. I'm going to have to try and read the rest tomorrow night because it is 1.30 and I can't keep my eyes open any longer. Hopefully tomorrow night is a better reading night. I'm a slow reader, but I was reading extremely slow tonight. Every time I thought I was making headway, I would look at the page number. What? I've only read 10 pages? How's that even possible? <laughs> I was shocking myself. I think I've reached new lows, but like I said, I am exhausted and it is really hot. Like, really hot. I am sweating. I actually had to change into shorts and take off my socks because I was dripping sweat. I'm almost tempted to read one more chapter, which is so dumb. 
Ugh. If I end up doing it, I'll tell you about it tomorrow. Good evening. <laughs> I am here in my fort, which I made in my room out of three chairs and a bunch of blankets. Can you see it? <laughs> Look at that. Brilliance. Right? <laughs> I've got a blanket for me, but it's very hot, so I don't really need it. My pillow to lay on, since this is spooky time in July. <laughs> My pumpkin latte plush from Squishables. All the spooky vibes. And popcorn, which I normally would not eat this late. But, gotta do it for the video, right? I did end up reading a little more last night. I made it to chapter 11, page 87. Still not where I wanted to be, but more than I had initially finished. So, I think it's going to get creepier from here. So, let's buckle up shall we? Let's do a little house tour first. This is how much space I have. Right. Can you see inside? <laughs> Seriously, this sleeping bag that I'm on, this thing has been in my family um, since I was in middle school which was back in like 2006, 2005, 2004. Oh my gosh. This thing is ancient. This thing is airtight, right? Check out the view. This is what I'm seeing. Spaces. I never really said what the book's about. So it's about this girl who lives in a small town in Vermont. The setting is everything you want in a book about fall. It has all the autumnal vibes. So perfect. The atmosphere sucks you in immediately. One day after school, she has a very weird experience with a woman at a nearby creek, and she comes into possession of a book. The book is a story about two brothers. In the beginning of the story, they're fine. At the end of the story, they've disappeared without a trace. And all these years later, it's kind of like a local legend. Still, no one knows what happened. She goes on a school field trip to a farm and starts to notice that things about this farm and its origin story mirror the farm in the book she's reading and the family that she's reading about. The owner of the modern day farm is a Webster. The family in the book, Webster's. 
she still tries to play it off, but all the coincidences are starting to make her feel a little spooked. On the way back to the school from the farm, the bus breaks down. Their teacher decides to walk back to the farm to call for help. The bus driver, who is actually a worker for the farm, he volunteered to drive the bus for the day. He tells the main character, Ollie, what is going to happen to her and her classmates as the mist rises. He tells her she needs to go to the woods and run. She ends up in the woods with two of her classmates, so it's Ollie, Coco, and Brian. It turns into this very spooky setting at night when the mist rises, the scarecrows come to life, and if they catch you, they take you away and you become a scarecrow. Reading small spaces in the dark with an ambiance video going was definitely spooky. <laughs> It was a lot for me, but the book isn't gory. I think the atmosphere I created made it spooky enough that I was like scared but not terrified, if that makes sense. I was interested enough to keep going. I never once felt like this is too scary, I can't continue. It's definitely more of a hocus pocus vibe than a slasher vibe. Like, Friday the 13th or something like that. This is a middle grade spooky book. I would definitely recommend it if you want spooky vibes without feeling <laughs> any terror. It was a fun time for me, I guess. <laughs> kind of a fun time. Yeah, it was fun. And I'm definitely interested in the next books. I just don't know if I'll read them this year. <laughs> I know I sound like a wimp, but I can only read a spooky book in the dark for so long before. It's too much for me and I can't sleep. I think I'll be okay. Like I said, it wasn't that scary. It was more the atmosphere. That video I'm playing scared me so many times. At one point <laughs> near the end of the book, this crow started going in the video. It scared me so bad. <laughs> but I finished it and I think I'm going to rate it four stars. That's a good rating. Obviously, I was extremely tired last night. I don't even know if my description of the book was coherent. I would like to add a couple more things. Number one, the twist at the end was good. Spoiler alert, the smiling man who controls all the scarecrows is actually a human. It would appear that he's somehow immortal. He has some kind of power, but he looks like a young, handsome man. So the real villain in the story didn't even end up being one of the creepy scarecrows. It was someone who looked human, who appeared young and handsome. There's a very deep meaning and conversation to be had somewhere in there. Number two, I mentioned Hocus Pocus last night because the book is definitely more spooky or even spoopy with a P rather than terrifying horror. What I forgot to mention is it gave me Scooby-Doo vibes, which is why I'm ending this vlog by watching some Scooby-Doo because Scooby-Doo is my one true love. <laughs> I love, love, love me some Scooby-Doo. And I think we should watch some Mystery Incorporated together to finish out this Halloween in July vlog. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Thank <laughs> you.